He was born in 604 Hijra in Balkh. Their city at present is in Afghanistan. Imam Jalaluddin Rumi was born in this part of the world, Balkh. And he was grandson, maternal grandson of the king Muhammad Khwarizm Shah, the Sultan Khwarizm Shah. Then due to some political reasons, his father, a Sheikh Bahauddin al-Balkhi, along with his family and hundreds of their followers, hundreds of their followers and students and murids, they had to leave from there. They have to migrate under some political pressures and jealousies and intrigues against them and problems. One thing has been always common among Ambiya and Oliya and that is Hijra. The whole history of Nubuwa and Vilaya. The whole history of prophethood and sainthood. One more thing has been always common and that is migration, traveling, migration, hijra. And the first hijra in this world took place in the life of Sayyidina Adam alayhi salam. He migrated from Jannah to earth. He was the first immigrant in this world. So Maulana Jalaluddin Rumi also migrated from Balkh to Iran, to Nashapur. And first meeting with one of the great saints of the time which he got in his childhood when he was about six, that was with Sheikh Fariduddin Attar. Then he came to Baghdad, then he came to Damascus, to Sham. And here in his childhood, young age, he met Sayyidina Ash-Shaykh al-Akbar, Muhyiddin ibn al-Arabi. And he was following his father, Sheikh Bahauddin al-Balkhi. When Sheikh Akbar saw both father and son, he commented, he said, a great ocean is following a small lake. And he was a child. These are the eyes of Oliya. He said, a great ocean is following a small lake. He meant a small, by small lake, he meant his father and his spiritual status and position. And by ocean, he referred to Imam Jalaluddin Rumi, the spiritual state which, station which he was going to achieve. And during their suffer, they keep on, they are promoting, they are being promoted to stage, to stage to another, they are promoted to higher stage, then promoted to higher stage. So suffer is promotion, a way of a promotion. Subhanallah. Then he went to Halab and then to Kunia. Then he came back to Damascus and Halab and studies the Uloom of Sharia for seven to ten years in Halab and Damascus. Mulana Rum. Then he settled finally in Kunia. You should keep in your mind he was not just a Sufi. He was one of the great authorities of Uloom al-Shariya in his time. Great authorities on fiqh, great authorities on ilm, on hadith, on rational sciences of Islam. And people right from east to west used to come to him to get his verdict. He was a recognized universal authority on Islam. Such a great scholar he was. His life has a resemblance with the life of Sayyidina Imam Al-Ghazali. He was also the, one of the greatest authorities of Islam. And Shaykhul Jamia and Nizamiya, he was Vice Chancellor of Jamia Nizamiya, built by Tusi, Imam Ghazali. And finally, when these people reach the last border of ilm, 
then they realize that the whole world of this ilm cannot lead you to the ultimate truth to the absolute reality the ilm i mean al ulum zahira they can't lead you to the ultimate truth to the ultimate reality so after holding such a big and high position and such a highly recognized seat of knowledge he left imam ghazali left the university of nizami and went into seclusion for 10 years and there he wrote a book al munkid min ad dalal and then he came to ihya ulum ad din then he got the secrets asrar the mysteries the secrets and he started revealing the secrets of din and ma'rifa the same thing happened to imam jalaluddin rumi so a, a time came in his life he used to teach the books of sharia book of logic of philosophy of fiqh islamic law and jurisprudence on tafsir and hadith and all ulum al sharia he used to teach to his students hundreds and hundreds of students he used to study under him and thousands of the talibin the seekers of knowledge used to visit him all of a sudden a change occurred in his life so his priority started changing priorities his likings direction of his life direction of his thinking started changing this was on one side and there was a person on other side his name was shamsuddin tabrez Imam Shamsuddin At-Tabrizi rahimahullah taala He had an ocean of ishq and ma'rifa in his heart an endless ocean of love of almighty Allah and his nurses and deep understanding of Allah's attributes ishq and ma'rifa and he was in the last years of his life and the shamsuddin tabrizi he became upset and asked almighty allah whom should i transfer this ocean to which i am having in my heart when which you have created in my heart and in my spirit Whom should I transfer this ocean to? He looked around and couldn't find anybody capable of that ocean. There may be many people claimant, but question is that who can digest the whole of ocean? Who can drink it and digest it and doesn't vomit? Many people they do drink but they vomit. There are many people who can't drink even a drop of the ocean of love and ocean of ma'rifah and there are some who just drink but a bowl or two bowls or three bowls and there are certain people who drink like canals and there are some people who drink like seas and there are some people who drink like oceans <laughs> 